the rabbis were in Medina and the Quraysh sent a delegation to find out from them how can we tell whether this man Nabi Muhammad is indeed a prophet the rabbis had asked him three questions which only a prophet can answer and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending the answers to the three questions one of the questions was ask him about the great traveler ask him about the great traveler who traveled to the two ends of the world so with question one ask him about the great traveler who traveled to the two ends of the earth and we are told that this traveler is called Zulkarnain the one who possesses two Karns. And Karn can mean a horn, so Karnain will be two horns. And Karn could also be an age or an epoch, a time. So Karnain will be two ages. So this is a man who is either of two horns or impacts upon two ages. Kulsuatlu Aikum Minhu is the Karn. I am going to tell you something about him which must be remembered. Inna makkanna lahu fil abdi wa atainahu min kulli shayin sabara. Behold, we established him on earth securely with the power and with the means, with the capacity and the knowledge and the right means to achieve anything that he might set out to achieve and so surely a superpower not an ordinary power, a superpower Fatba Sababa and so he chose the right means now to do what he wanted to do He sets out on a journey to the west and uh, he reaches a place where the sun is setting and there he found it setting in a body of water that was Hamia dark murky so visibility in that water will be very shallow and there he came across a people is it possible for us to identify that body of water? if we can we'll be on the way to locating the geographical location of the area in which we're talking about we're going to do that in a moment inshallah then Zulkarnain set off on the second journey now and he's going to the rising of the sun and when he had traveled to the distance that he could travel the Quran does not tell us how far it was he came upon a people a people لَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِهَا سِتْرَةً We have not provided for them as a covering other than this covering. It appears to us that it is the natural covering that you have from the sunshine. So a people living a primitive way of life. And he left them as they were. And then he went on to the third journey, which is verse number 92. And so now he travels in the third direction. He comes to a place between two, a path between two mountain ranges. On this side are mountains, on this side are mountains. And in between there is a pass. Can we? locate G 
geographically where we talking about is it possible a pass between two mountain ranges and there he come across he came across a people la yakaduna yafqahuna qawla he came across a people whose language he could not understand because their language was unique their language had no connections with other language in that region it was a language which was not connected with all the other languages in that region when they had learned to communicate with each other then these people spoke to zulkarnain and said to him ya zulkarnain o zulkarnain in the juja juja musiduna fill up gog and magog are committing acts of fasad in our territory so gog and magog have phd's in fasad o zulkarnain can you help us you have the power can you build a barrier to protect us from these people he should have said i don't need to build any barrier i'll move in there and i'll beat them up and they won't touch you anymore so i don't need to build any barrier i'll go and teach them a lesson they'll never forget but no he didn't say that they said we prepared to pay you he said i don't need your money what allah has given to me is more valuable so he agreed to build the barrier what i need from you is your labor help me with your manpower and i'm going to build a barrier between you now number 96 verse number 96 bring me blocks of iron and so that has to be a geographical location where there is iron ore it has to be a geographical location where there are mountain ranges and a pass between the mountain ranges it has to be a geographical location where on the left you have a body of water which is so dark and murky that visibility is very shallow okay and it has to be an area where there are large deposits of iron or bring me blocks of iron and after he had covered the pass with blocks of iron he said build a furnace blow with your bellows and now bring me molten copper so he poured the molten copper and the engineer we have an engineer here tells me that this to prevent rust and after he had built the barrier he covered it the quran speaks it changes from the word sadain to use another word sadafain in verse number 95 اتوني زبر الحديد حتى اذا ساوى بين الصدفين previously the word used was sadain but now the word used is sadafain sada sadain is two barriers two mountain ranges but sadafain is something else it is like the two sides of a shell we're going to have some pictures of this now the two sides of a shell you been to the seashore when you open a shell like this it will join at the bottom but open at the top that's the shape of the pass between the mountains join at the bottom open at the top hmm? so when he had blocked off this space this sadafain now the molten copper is put on it and then Gog and Magog could neither scale the barrier nor could they penetrate it, so they are now trapped behind the barrier. And so Zulkarnain now says, "Has a rahmat of Rabbi." This barrier is constructed in, in, in consequence of Allah's kindness and grace. For Ida ja wa'ad Rabbi, but when that time come of which my word has warned. is a footy hut 
they will not return to reclaim the town as their, as their own until either Futihad, until Bag and Magag are released. When that time comes for Gog and Magog to be released so that Banu Israel are to be brought back to the Holy Land, Nabikum Lafifa, brought back as a motley crowd, at that time, Ja'alahu Dakka, Allah is going to bring down this barrier and it become dust. Now let's turn to the pictures and see whether we can locate. This is the Caucasus Mountains here. The white being the snow. And on the left side there is a body of water. Which is so dark and so murky with so much algae in it that it has been given a name. And that name has been there with it for many, many, many years. Even the time of Ibn Kathir. It's called the Black Sea. It's called the Black Sea. Why? Because it is so dark. If you go to the Mediterranean Sea and you're on a ship, you can see several meters underneath the water. But if you go to the Black Sea, you'll hardly be able to see more than one meter underneath the water. On this side of the Black Sea is the Caspian Sea. And in between the Caspian and the Black Sea is this body of land. So we see that Zulkarnain is traveling in that direction to the west and then in this direction to the east. The Caucasus Mountains are an unbroken range of mountains from that end to this end. But in between the Caucasus Mountains there is one pass, only one, in between. It's called the Dariel Gorge. Let's see if we have... There we are. There is the gorge and there is one side and there is the other side. And it's like an open shell. See? The Quran is describing this Sadafain. So we have, I believe, established for you the geographical location of God and Magog. The people who are located behind the barrier. Behind the barrier, on that side of the Caucasus, were the Khazar. On that side of the Caucasus were the Khaza, a tribe of people who converted and became Jews. Must have been on a Sunday morning. And some of them converted from Judaism and became Christians. Must have been on a Sunday evening. So you have Khaza, you have Khaza who are Jews, and you have Khaza who are Christians. But they did not become Jews because of religious conviction. They became Jews as a matter of political convenience. So they don't particularly care for Torah and for the laws of diet and so on. So these are people who are Jews as a nation, but not as a religion. <laughs> huh? A nation, not a religion. These are the people who today control power in the world. Who are Gog and Magog? They are human beings. They are not some strange creature living in the interior of the earth. That's Disneyland thinking. They are human beings. The barrier built by Zulkarnain was 
destroyed by Allah in the lifetime of Nabi Muhammad And if you don't want to believe this that I have said, fine, you can accept that the barrier is still there. We don't have to be divided and be, be fighting with each other over it. No. I say the barrier is gone, it's destroyed. You say the barrier is still there. So why do we have to be fighting and dividing ourselves with each other over this? All I'm saying is if the barrier is still standing, why aren't you searching for it? I think there's a question of credentials here. If a barrier built by Zulkarnain mentioned in the Quran, a geographical reality mentioned in the Quran is still standing on the face of the earth, not buried beneath the surface of the earth. What kind of Disneyland thinking is that? If it is there standing on the face of the earth, why are you not searching for it? Why has no human being seen and recognized that barrier in 1400 years? And more since the Quran was revealed. Why? My answer is because it's already been destroyed. But you don't accept that answer. You say Imran Hussein is misguided. Don't listen to Imran Hussein. Fine. That's shameful. Scholars don't behave like that. If Gog and Magog have been released, then we can understand the facade in the world today. Universal facade. In the Ajuja wa Ma'juja Mufsiduna fill up. If they are released in the world, they are the agents of facade. They are the ones who have brought the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. Then it's very easy for us to recognize who they are. To Gog and Magog, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, to major signs of Akhir zaman And yet, our critics are emphatic that no, the Jal has not been released. Gog and Magog have not been released. If we can't find a barrier built by Zulkarnain, which is made of iron and steel, it's probably somewhere down a few miles underneath the earth. Is that scholarship? We do not want to disrespect our critics. But we say, if you are not prepared to accept the Dajjal is the mastermind of the modern age. And the Gog and Magog are the means to which the Dajjal pursues his mission on the earth. Then we're very sorry, we're moving on. We can't wait on you. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam was asleep. At the home of his wife Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. And he woke up from his sleep when the hadith is located in Sahih Bukhari in several different versions from several different sources companions. So we say it is mutawatir. He woke up from his sleep. What he had seen in his sleep, also a vision like Ibrahim alayhi salam, was so terrible, so terrible. That his face was red, flushed, red. It has to be something terrible for the Prophet of Allah to wake up with his face all red, flushed, red. What did he see? He woke up and he spoke these memorable lines. He said, min sharrin qadik taraba. Woe unto the Arabs because of an evil, shab, an evil. It can't be an ordinary evil for his face to be so flushed red. It has to be a very great evil, which is now close. And then he raised his hands like this and he said, Today, <coughs> today means this day. Or 1,000 years from now. Where has reason fled? He said, today. A hole has been made. In the radam. He didn't use the word sad. He used the word radam. Surah Al-Kaf has both the words. When they ask Zulkarnain to build it, they use the word sad. 
When he built it, he used the word Radam. And the hadith says the Radam of Zulkarnain, of Yajuj and Majuj. Today, a hole has been made, indicating that the great evil which is going to devastate the Arabs has not as yet occurred. It is an end time event because the words Gog and Magog are there. What is this great catastrophe that is coming on the Arabs? What is this great destruction that is coming on the Arabs which has not as yet come? Where is Islamic scholarship today? Why are you not asking these questions? And I'm not asking the Malay ulama. I'm not asking the Indonesian ulama. I'm asking the Arab ulama. She asked, Who? Zainab. Radiallahu ta'ala anha. Anuhlika. Will we be destroyed? Anuhlika. Halaka. To destroy, huh? will we be destroyed? This is the word she asked. Will we, the Arabs, be destroyed when there are righteous people amongst us? The hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. He said, Naam, yes. And then he went on to use words I never understood until recently. Until I saw the pathetic state of Islamic scholarship today and the even pathetic state of those who lead Muslims today. He said, When the scum prevails, then it will come. And today, the scum prevails. They have eyes and yet they cannot see. They have ears and yet they cannot hear. They have hearts and yet they do not understand. They're worse than cattle. They're the scum. And when the scum prevails, then the destruction of the Arabs, not the Malay, not the Turks, the Arabs will take place. But I want to take you now back to that spot in the Caucasus mountains because we want to fine-tune our attempt to identify Gog and Magog. It is not sufficient to say that Gog and Magog are the European Christians and European Jews. No! Because amongst the European Christians and European Jews, there will be those who become Muslims, there will be those who are our friends and allies. Do not make the mistake. We have to look for a people who will eventually be moving from that northern area and moving towards Jerusalem. Shortly after the death of the Prophet وسلم, something very mysterious happened in that part of the world that historians have chosen to bury. A tribe called the Khaza, Khaza chose to embrace Judaism and so the world witnessed for the first time the very strange phenomenon of a non-Semitic people becoming Jews non-Semitic becoming Jews and these people, the Khaza, chose to convert to Judaism, but they did so not 
for any religious reasons. They were not so much interested in the kitab and to follow the law. They embraced Judaism for purposes of political expediency. They were sandwiched between Islam and Christianity, Byzantine Christianity, and they chose Judaism. These European Jews who have no racial biological connection with the Banu Israel multiply they multiply and multiplied and breed it to such an extent that today nine or nine in every ten Jews in the world, ninety percent or more are European Jews. They outnumber the Semitic Jews by 9 to 1 or 10 to 1. These European Jews, if you look at the list of names of Nobel Prizes for science, for literature, would you name it? You will find that these are people who far exceed the rest of mankind in their intellectual brilliance, in their academic achievements, in their scientific research.